Lucifer, Phosphorus, Ishtar, Morning Star, Evening Star, all these sonorous names signify one and the same celestial body. Venus, the third brightest object in our sky, this planet has always attracted sky watchers and scientists. For many years, dense impenetrable clouds shrouding its surface have excited observers' imagination, which prompted ideas of now a boundless ocean, then impassable jungles crawling with monsters. The reality turned out to be even more complicated and horrifying than these naive assumptions. So what does Venus really conceal from us? Cosmo Venus is the Sun's second closest planet, lying 0.72 astronomical units away from the system's center. Its orbital period equals roughly 225 Earth days. Interestingly, every 584 days, the distance between Venus and our planet shrinks to its smallest at approximately 0.25 astronomical units. Notably, Venus faces the Earth with one and the same side throughout their closest approach. There is no hard evidence to account for this fact, but it may be either due to the tidal forces exerted by our planet, or else it could be a mere coincidence. In terms of its physical characteristics, Venus resembles the Earth in many ways. Its average radius equals 6,052 kilometers or 95% that of the Earth, and its mass is 4.87 times 10 to the power of 24 kilograms, which is 0.82 that of our planet. Every 243 days, Venus completes a full rotation on its axis, and the rotation axis is tilted at 3.4 degrees with respect to the ecliptic plane. For a long time, Venus has concealed its real face from observers on the Earth behind a veil of its dense atmosphere and thick clouds. This gave rise to a whole plethora of highly imaginative hypotheses and assumptions some of them claimed that there was a highly advanced civilization concealed under the planet's impervious outer layer, while others suggested that there was a world that was home to peculiar life forms. Until a certain point in the recent past, assumptions about Venus were to be confined to the realms of fancy. Space flights and the advancement of radio location technologies proved to be a major breakthrough that made the desired answers closer than ever. For example, it turned out that radio waves of a certain range pass freely through the planet's atmosphere and get reflected from solid rocks. This effect made it possible to make the first maps of Venus back in 1978 by the orbiter pioneer Venus 1. Soviet orbiters contributed to the collected data, but the maps were accurate up to 1 to 2 kilometers and outlined only the largest features of the Venusian terrain. This is the reason why it was necessary to go on to send the Magellan Orbiter, a large specialized radar. In the period from 1990 to 1994, images of 95% of the planet's surface were beamed back to the Earth by the spacecraft. Interestingly, their resolution reached 120 meters. The information collected by the Magellan spacecraft is still considered the most exhaustive and accurate data about the Venusian surface. Before talking about any planet's surface, it's worth looking at its inner makeup. According to the most reliable and well-grounded theory, Venus has a metallic core at its center, whose mass accounts for as much as 25% of the planet's overall mass. Observations show that Venus has no magnetic field, which is why the metallic core is more likely than not in a solid state. It is embedded in a silicate mantle as deep as 3,000 kilometers. Its upper layer is a solid crust, whose average thickness measures as much as 16 kilometers. It is posited that Venus's lithosphere doesn't form tectonic plates on account of high temperatures and a high viscosity of the rocks. This makes the planet's geologic activity quite different from that on our Earth. Venus is also peculiar for not having that many large impact craters. Large areas of its surface are covered by basalt plains that formed from solidified lava. Some features of the relief found here are uniquely Venusian and are not to be found on any other planet in the solar system. An example of these is tesserae, highly ragged mountainous areas resembling roof tiles. 
Arachnoids and Coronae are two other unique types of the planet's terrain. Round or oval structures with diameters measuring several hundred kilometers. They appear to be impact craters, but their origin is different. Rather than celestial objects in fall, they formed as a result of tectonic processes. An unprepared viewer will not easily notice any features of the Venusian terrain even in processed images. That's why let's take a look at the elevation map of the planet's surface, where areas of different height are marked by contrast colors. The region that instantly catches our eye is the largest elevated feature on Venus nicknamed Aphrodite Terra. Areas like that may well be considered conditional continents of the planet. Aphrodite Terra is a gigantic territory stretching along the planet's equator. Its mountainous relief is rather elaborate. According to different estimates, the length of Aphrodite Terra may reach 18,000 km and the width around 5,000 km. Depending on the method of defining the continent's borders, its area is estimated in the range from 29 to 41 million square kilometers, which is comparable with the area of Asia. If we look at Aphrodite Terra, we will see three vast areas – Artler Regio, Thetis Regio and Dovda Regio. The first one of these is located in the eastern part of the continent and is notable for the highest volcano on Venus – Mart Mons. The distance from its foot to its peak measures around 5 km and the overall height above the average level of the celestial object's surface is anything from 8.3 to 8.8 .8 km, according to different estimates. The volcano is currently dormant, although there is evidence that it erupted comparatively recently in geological terms. Namely, it can be inferred both from solidified lava flows and lack of impact craters on the volcano's slopes. Of de Regio sprawls in the western part of Aphrodite Terra. This is a region particularly attractive in terms of tectonic processes. The mountain ridges here run in different directions, which means that there are several forces tearing at the crust simultaneously and deforming it. Moreover, deep crevices have been discovered here that contain traces of lava spillage. These may well be considered the most bizarre volcanoes on the planet. We're moving on to the west, to the very edge of the continent, where the alleged descent points of four Venera probes can be found, and two of the probes were destroyed by the planet's atmosphere before reaching the surface. All these are located in the southern part of a vast lowland region known as Guinevere Planitia. It stretches for many thousands of kilometers and is quite a match to Aphrodite Terra in terms of area. Even though it is called a Planitia, the area has an elaborate relief which is a mixture of various geologic formations. It is thought that the planet's crust was being crumpled by tectonic forces for many hundreds of millions of years, and this produced the ridges and the folds. At the same time, the lava spilling from the crevices spread across and solidified, filling the lowlands with smooth basalt plains. As a result, this region is rich in both flat areas and clearly defined uplands. The western part of Guinevere Planitia borders on the so-called Beta Regio. As this vast area looks quite bright in photos, it is one of the first features of Venusian relief that got its own name. Beta Regio is an elevated area which is more or less round-shaped with a diameter measuring roughly two and a half thousand kilometers. Its eastern part is the final abode of the debris of the spacecraft Venera 9 and Venera 10. The spacecraft, which beamed back to us the first ever photos of Venus back in 1975. They also gauged the atmosphere's parameters and sampled the soil, which turned out to be similar to basalts back on the Earth. All this information allows us to assume that Beta Regio is the largest volcanic massif on Venus. That is why this area offers highest chances to discover active volcanoes on the planet. We're moving on to the north now, to the second largest conditional Venusian continent dubbed Ishtar Terra. It stretches for roughly 8,000 kilometers east to west and approximately 2,500 kilometers north to south. The territory's area equals about 8.5 million square kilometers, which makes Ishtar Terra only slightly larger than Australia. In the center is the largest volcanic massif on Venus. Maxwell Montes. 
They tower 11 kilometers high above the planet's average level and 7 kilometers above the rest of the relief around. The highest peak in the center of the region is a comparatively flat plateau, measuring roughly 200 by 400 kilometers. The difference in height doesn't exceed 1.5 kilometers, so it is extremely difficult to distinguish separate peaks as the measurements are not accurate enough. Maxwell Montes are the coldest region on the planet. The temperature here is as low as around 380 degrees Celsius and the atmosphere is about twice as rarefied as near the surface. Still, it is 44 times denser than that of the Earth. Another thing about this region is that it looks quite bright in photos, which means that the surface of the peaks and slopes is likely to be covered with some substance which reflects radio waves remarkably well. It is thought that it could be metallic compounds with impurities of sulfur like pyrite, hematite or galena. Exposed to high temperatures, these substances can vaporize from the surfaces of lowlands and then precipitate in colder mountainous regions as fine grain reminiscent of snow. While examining the Venusian surface, you can't help thinking this. Are all these amazing and mysterious places to remain unexplored by humans? Is there a chance of us ever leaving our footprints on this planet's surface? So close, yet so forbidding. Because the atmospheric pressure on Venus is about 93 times that of the Earth, and the temperature near the planet's surface is on average 737 Kelvin or 464 degrees Celsius. These conditions are so extreme that even space probes specially designed to explore Venus last no more than an hour. As for terraforming Venus, this idea seems totally unrealistic. On the other hand, there are in Venus's atmosphere some layers whose temperature and pressure are close to those of the Earth. In the last century, ideas were even put forward about designing a habitable base hovering in the planet's atmosphere suspended from special aerostats. Still, in reality, the actual possibility of putting such projects into practice remains an open question. And either way, Venus is awaiting her heroes, and her secrets will sooner or later be revealed. Dear friends, of course it is impossible to cover a global topic like that profoundly within just one episode. There is quite a number of exciting facts we haven't spoken about, and if you'd like to find out more, feel free to let us know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, we'll be happy if you give us a like. And let's keep in touch.